everything on the uh, Wood Whisperer community and we've got a lot of great feedback from you guys. Thank you so much. As promised, here's a video about how I built it and uh, some more information about how it works. The first thing you'll notice is this is entirely made out of solid wood. Everything I saw online, while really cool, was a lot of plywood and balsa and I, I just don't have any of that. So uh, obviously I was left to pillage my supplies with scrap wood and uh, I had to settle for black walnut, birch, ash, and uh, American elm. But hey, you do what you gotta do. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to show you is the barrel. To start out with some real simple measurements, the, each barrel is about 12 and a quarter inches long. There are a total of seven barrels on here. And that's really not planned, that's just kind of how many could fit on there on a, a round one inch walnut dough. There are two ways to load the gun. You can start by wrapping the string, um, and as you wrap it, add rubber bands. So, for instance, we'll go there, and then go to the knot, that notch. So the string goes through the first notch, rubber band goes through the next. Okay, so that's one way to do it. The next way to do this, um, option number two, is simply to wind the string around all of the slots. And then once you're all the way around, that's some yellow ones here, you can go down an entire barrel at once. So then you no longer have to keep spinning it. Really quickly, one of the details um, that helped this thing work really well is you'll see that the rubber band is in front and then the string. You don't want the string to be underneath the rubber band because um, it'll stick more. So you want each string to be kind of separate and able to move freely underneath the rubber bands. And uh, one thing you'll notice with this guy is it's powerful. This is an electric screwdriver, so it's not hurting for torque. The other thing you'll notice is these rubber bands are big and thick. These are the thick ones. Um, everything else I've seen are those tiny little rubber bands. Nah, went with the big ones. Um, I had the big ones as a kid in a little plastic uh, six shooter, and I loved it, so obviously that's what I had to go with on the Gatling gun here. So uh, here goes. Yeah. All right, so I mentioned that everything here is built out of scrap wood. So let me just show you a few pictures of what the uh, what projects the wood was donated from. First project here was the uh, the ash. So the barrels here that came from a bunk bed I built about a year and a half ago for my kids. Now if I could just get them to sleep in it. The uh, walnut here and here, and here, and here, uh, came from a project that um, I shared a long time ago, uh, okay, three years ago maybe, two years ago, three years ago, and it was a TV cabinet um, with two doors, pretty simple, but it looked really good. The uh, other thing, uh, let's see, birch, so yeah, the birch, the whole length of the gun here, the frame, or the chassis. That came from the wood that I used to completely redo the interior on a hundred year old safe that I got from my great aunt. Um, my great aunt also gave me some guns too, so this is quite fitting. And then lastly, what do we got? Oh, elm, right here. That elm doll right there. Um, that was left over from an elm bench that I built Actually, that was the first project I ever shared on Facebook, and I was amazed by um, how many people actually liked the junk I built. So there you go. So here's a cool feature. Um, this barrel is removable, and the way it sits on here is there is a fine um, metal pin here that I polished up with steel wool and a brass, brass washer, and that's all epoxied in there. That's, this one is permanent. On this end, there's another brass washer 
But what I've done is I've bored out the hole here, extra deep, for this spring, and then another pin. So what that allows me to do is to remove the barrel, because now it's held in completely by the spring pin. And there we go. So one of the trickiest things in this project was to get the barrels to fit on a one-inch dowel. Uh, what I ended up doing on the rotor table is using a simple, I guess you would call it like a cove bit, and building a 45 degree kind of table. So I ended up having the board supported like that with another board here at 45 degrees. So what that allowed me to do, and okay, this is completely the wrong way to run it through a table, but just so you can see, is I would run it, run it through to 45 with this bit adjusted just right, and then I would be able to cut that nice um, kind of cove in the end there. And that ended up fitting on the one inch walnut dowel just perfectly. All right, and speaking of tricky cuts, making the dowel was, uh, took a lot of trial and error. So that dowel was started out as a piece of square stock, and I ended up drilling a hole and chucking it in a drill so I could spin that square dowel around through one of these holes. So what you do is you size the square dowel just perfectly to fit through this hole. And uh, as you spin it, you'll have a router bit in here, just a simple, uh, like a spiral bit works pretty well. Well, actually, that, that kind of grabbed it too much. Just a simple bit like, uh, like this one right here. And you adjust that to shave off that square dowel so that when it comes out the other side, it ends up being round. Uh, using a whole lot of wax, a lot of trial and error, and uh, more patience than some days I have, I was able to turn out that perfect one inch black walnut dowel. And again, this would be clamped to the table like that. The bit would come up through the bottom here. That's where the bit would go. And then vacuum also connects to the top here. There's a port for the vacuum to suck all the chips out the top as well as dust collection through the bottom. So run it through there, end up with the dowel, and then it would still need a whole bunch of cleanup. And I would end up taking uh, basically a leather glove and some sandpaper and keep spinning it in the drill until that dowel got nice and smooth. Now one thing I would absolutely do differently on this is I would cut these notches first. So that's the very first thing I would do on these pieces is cut these notches. Because I cut the notches, this was all an experiment, so I cut the notches afterwards after decide, determining that I couldn't do it without the notches. And what I ended up getting is trying to run this on a table saw sled stand it upright, and then run it through the blade. And there was, as you would expect, a ton of chip out. And that's kind of the reason why you see this rounded over profile on here. That's just to hide my, uh, the mess that I made on the table saw. And you can't really tell that I chipped it out as bad as I did. There's a few spots where you can see my blunders, but overall, doesn't affect the function. But that's one thing I would absolutely do differently. Cut those grooves the very first thing on a sled. All right, so I was deciding whether or not I should take this apart and show you the electronics, but it's really not that interesting. Basically, this screwdriver, I, I cut it all apart. What was great about buying a screwdriver is it came with a motor, came with a battery, which is behind this plate, and it came with a trigger. And one of the coolest things about the whole setup is that you can charge the battery because this is an electric screwdriver. There is a charging port in the bottom. And there's also a little light, but you can't really see it. You just plug it in for an hour and you know it's good. Um, and another tricky thing was getting this to fit in here. It involves just some tweaking and shaving on the, uh, on the bandsaw, not a big deal. But the whole trigger thing kind of wanted to fall apart after you cut it to pieces. So I used Bondo, um, kind of gobbed it all in there around all the circuit boards and all that. And that kind of holds everything together, together keeps it solid and uh, with a little filing and sanding I was able to get a nice solid rigid chunk of the screwdriver and kind of cram it in there and this is entirely friction fit there's no glue holding it in um, but it is really tight and it, it doesn't move at all the other cool thing is this has forward reverse and lockout so on here you can go reverse lockout or safety and forward so, kind of a neat feature. You don't really need both directions, you just need one. But, hey, pretty cool. And then lastly was the motor. 
which provided a great clamping point. And you can kind of see, I'm not the greatest at soldering, but it looked pretty enough that I didn't want to cover it up. So I left the wires bare here. And again, behind this back panel is a 18650 lithium ion battery. Um, I'm a flashlight nerd too, so that's one of my favorite batteries. And it was happy to see that was what was already in the screwdriver. Didn't have to buy one. So again, that's all kind of soldered together and then placed behind this wall. To connect the electronics, there's a hole drilled from here to here. And uh, there's actually a plug back here where I plugged that hole. Had a really long drill bit, came in back here, and bore all the way through. I like the way the wires look here, but I didn't want to look at any more wires than I had to. As for the drill, it was originally orange, uh, painted it black. I probably could have done a better job. Maybe matte black would have looked cooler. Maybe in version 2. Um, but I also painted it black up here. And this is just a real simple clamping system where two screws come from the back and hold that, hold this in. Um, which uh, actually allows for a very, very firm uh, connection. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I sure enjoyed making this, and I really enjoyed shooting it. And if anyone was wondering, there's the screwdriver used. It's the 4-volt cordless XTD extended reach driver from Works. I bought mine at Lowe's for like 20 bucks.